And behold, our God, whom we worship, is able to save us from the furnace of burning fire and to deliver us out of thy hands, O King. But if he will not, be it known to thee, O King, that we will not worship thy gods, nor adore the golden statue which thou hast set up. Daniel chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. We cannot beat God in generosity. When we are generous to God, He'll be more generous to us. If we remain faithful to Jesus, He will also remain faithful to us and more. God's fidelity to us is manifested in many ways, and it's more evident when we are in the midst or at the height of persecution. For God comes to our rescue when our back is against the wall and everyone else has left us. First manifestation of God's fidelity to us, He empowers us with the Holy Spirit to have impeccable wisdom and depth of knowledge that is hard to refute by our accusers or persecutors in matters of faith and morals. The scripture tells us that God will put the right words into our lips and we need not worry how we are to prepare for our defense. Our wisdom will be too much for our enemies to question that they will be rendered important during confrontation. St. Stephen's martyrdom is an example of this empowerment of the Holy Spirit. In the Acts of the Apostles, this brave young saint silenced all the Pharisees who plotted against him with strong words of truth. He cried out, You stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who foretold the coming of the just one, of whom you now have become the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law of the direction of angels and have not kept it. The same scripture account was also mentioned by St. John who wrote, When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed at him with their feet. But Stephen, being full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice, covered their ears, drove Stephen out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of the young man named Saul. They stoned Stephen as he was calling on God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Second manifestation. God will give us the charity to be able to forgive our persecutors even to the point of death. Sister Agnes Pila, one of the seven martyrs of Song Kong, Thailand, is an example, already bleeding to death from the gunshots she received. Sister Pila mustered enough strength to forgive the policemen and their chief who masterminded her execution. She even prophesied the conversion of the to the Catholic faith of the chief of police, which happened shortly after her death. Proof only that with her heroic fidelity to her faith, God in turn cannot be outdone in generosity. He answered her prayer, and the conversion of those who perpetuated her killing happened soon after her death. Third manifestation. God will give us the fortitude to withstand all tortures and even crucifixion with serenity of mind and heart. In the story of Daniel and King Nebuchadnezzar, we see Daniel and his companions 
thrown into the burning furnace, heated seven times more for refusing to worship the idols of King Nebuchadnezzar. Is this true? You refuse to worship my statue? O oh, King, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. Really? Then you shall be thrown into the furnace, and no god will save you from my hand. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, our god will defend us from it. And if he does not, we want you to know, O oh, King, that we will not serve your gods or worship the statue of the Enough! You dare to defy me? Let the furnace be heated sevenfold. Bind them and cast them into the fire. Fire has not harmed your bodies. Not a hair is singed. Your robes, there's not even the smell of the fire on you. Praise be to your God, who sent his angel to rescue his servant. But in the end, Daniel and his two companions were all left unharmed. There was also this woman during the great Roman persecution of Emperor Diocletian, a mother whose seven sons were one by one tortured right in front of her. With courage, she told her sons not to give up their faith, to choose death rather than betray Jesus who died for them. In the end, she too succumbed to the fatal blows of her torturers peacefully proclaiming that she was a Christian. Live as a Christian and happy to die a Christian. Today, in many parts of the world, we learn of Christians renouncing their faith when threatened physically, mentally, and morally by the enemies of the church. How easily many succumb to the threat of death and renounce their Christian faith. Today, Apostasy is the reality to contend with because man has become numb to the loss of the sense of God and sense of sin. Read number 675 and 678 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church and you will see it there confirmed. The persecution that accompanies the church pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity in the form of religious deception offering man an apparent solution to their problems at the price of apostasy from the truth. And he was there uh, late in the evening, uh, was at home with his wife, and all of a sudden Boko Haram came to their village. He said, as he prayed, uh, Lord, may your will be done. And he went out there and he faced them and he said, uh, yes, I am a Christian. And they first tried this sort of friendly approach. Well, why don't you convert to Islam? Say the Shahada. All you have to do is say there's no God but Allah and, and Muhammad is his prophet and then uh, we will invite you into Boko Haram. We will provide you protection. We'll take care of you and your family. You won't have to worry about anything. And by the way, the stakes were very high and he knew that because 20 Christians were killed in that village that night and, and they'd heard these stories. He, he knew that it was a very real threat. Uh, but he said, no, I, I am a Christian and I will be a Christian even to my death. And they shot him in the face with an AK-47 literally took part of his face away. And uh, Vivian, you know, immediately tried to apply pressure to his wound. God miraculously saved him. In fact, he says, if I saw the man who shot me today, I would embrace him and I would tell him that I forgive him. But in Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 to 14, we are reminded that being faithful to God's covenant of love brings us blessings. The infidelity to the covenant with God brings us curses and calamities. So let us pray that we will be empowered by the Holy Spirit to remain faithful to God and to the Catholic faith until the end of our life. Our saint today is the epitome of fidelity to God unto death. His name is Pedro de Jesus Maldonado, a native Mexican from Chihuahua City, 
At 17, he entered the diocesan seminary and became known for his deep piety. During the religious persecution in Mexico, many seminarians fled to El Paso, Texas, but Maldonado remained in Chihuahua and studied music. Later, he continued his religious studies and was ordained as a priest on January 25, 1918. Father Maldonado worked with the Tarahumara natives and sought to reduce the amount of alcohol they consumed. He helped the poor with money and clothing. He took a special interest in the religious education of both children and adults, explaining Catholic doctrine by using photographs. At harvest time, farmers would ask him to bless fields invaded by locusts, and there are accounts that claim his prayer expelled the locusts more than once. During the Cristero War between 1926 to 1929, Father Maldonado and other priests in Chihuahua were the targets of anti-Catholic violence. Father Maldonado was beaten several times, even inside his church, by Freemasons, but he continued to carry out his ministry until his death. On Ash Wednesday of 1937, Father Maldonado was arrested by government operatives who discovered his hiding place in a ranch. He refused the demands of the president that required priests to have professional ID before they could celebrate Mass. Of course, this was unfair because priests are ordained to celebrate Mass and hear confession. The government locked all churches, forbade priests to celebrate Mass, expose the Blessed Sacrament, as well as give Holy Communion to the faithful. They were also not allowed to preach, catechize, and evangelize without permission from the government. Father Pedro and 22 other priests in Guadalajara refused to obey these unjust laws. Regularly in the evening, Father Pedro would celebrate Mass in the locked churches. If not, he would improvise vacant halls and convert them into chapels, where secretly he would celebrate Mass with homily to enkindle the fire of God's love in the hearts of the Mexicans. He then catechized the people and afterwards would expose the Blessed Sacrament for people to do adoration before the exposed Blessed Sacrament. For the longest time, he was able to carry out his priestly ministry without counting the cost. For his love for God animated him with great zeal. But eventually, his heroism was put to the test. One evening, as Father Pedro was adoring our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, by a surprise, a truckload of police arrived. Fearing that the soldiers would desecrate the Eucharist, Father Pedro hid the Eucharist in his breast in a fix and helped his fellow adorers run for safety. The police were able to catch up with Padre Pedro, whom they brought barefooted to the town hall. There our poor saint was bitten so badly that even his skull was fractured. He refused to answer his torturers when questioned as to why he violated the government order. His silence fueled the soldiers' anger even further and broke every bone of his body with a butt of their rifles. In the midst of this violence, Padre Pedro harnessed enough strength to reach out his breast pocket with a fix with a blessed sacrament. Witnesses reported afterwards that they saw the police grow frantic seeing the poor priest grasp tightly the little fix in his left hand. Guessing what it might be, his torturers demanded Father Maldonado to open his left palm. But the priest refused. They shouted at him and forced Father Pedro to open his mouth and to stick out his tongue, thinking that he might have consumed the sacred house. But finding none, the police cut out his tongue. The soldiers then threatened to pluck out his eyes if he would not reveal what he held tightly in his left hand. Father Maldonado remains unmoved. A policeman then took out his bayonet and plucked out both of Father's eyes. Adaman Father Maldonado held on tightly to the fix. This angered even more his torturers with a sudden blow with their rifles. They broke the poor priest's legs, leaving him this time 
not only blind, mute, but also lame. By the strength that could only have been given by the Holy Spirit, our saint continued to keep the fix containing the Eucharist hidden in his hands. Father Maldonado protected our dear Lord with his life. Amazingly, through all his torture, Father Maldonado was conscious, peaceful, and not once did he fought back or resisted. Even a single cry never escaped his lips. His face seemed to be illuminated by the light from heaven. Finally, a policeman took a bayonet and drew it into his left hand, attempting to cut the nerves that locked the palms close. This immediately forced the priest to loosen his grief and the fix as the blood immediately sprouted out from the gaping wound of his hand. Padre Pedro was then forced to let go of the fix. His attackers took the sacred hose, put them in the priest's mouth, and ordered Father Maldonado to eat it, not realizing they were fulfilling his last wish. After consuming the Eucharist, the already near death, and police brought Father Maldonado after consuming the Eucharist and already near death. The police brought Father Pedro Maldonado back to Chihuahua City, where he died from severe brain trauma and injuries to his body. He was 44 years old. In official documents, his death was deemed a murder to many parishioners in Chihuahua, as well as to his fellow priests and his bishops. Padre Pedro Maldonado died a martyr's death because of his heroic fidelity to his priestly ministry. On his tombstone is inscribed the summary of his life's purpose. You are a priest forever. Pope John Paul II canonized Padre Pedro Maldonado in the Jubilee year 2000, a martyr and a saint. If we die with him, we shall also live with him. Jesus warns us in Matthew 10, 33, if we hold fast to our confession faithfully until death, we will live eternally in heaven with him. But if we deny him, he will also deny us before his Father. If we endure hardship with Christ now, we will be rewarded by reigning with him in heaven. But if we are faithless, by not enduring hardship, we will lose reward. But because of his faithfulness to his covenant, we will still be saved, for he cannot deny himself. Several years ago, I happened to meet some Dominican sisters of Shena who told me of a harrowing experience they had in one dangerous area down south of the Philippines. The sisters were driving down the mountainside when they came bumper to bumper with a truckload of terrorist rebels. The men jumped into the truck and surrounded the sisters' van. Armed with automatic rifles, they ordered them to come out of their vehicle. At that moment, the superior thought, this is it. This is it. This is the end of our lives. The terrorists took them to the nearby town. Along the way, fearful and bewildered, the superior felt the need to pray and to sing. She said, it began as a trickle, a presence that said, the Lord is my true shepherd, no one, no fear I know. She protested, but Lord, I don't know how to sing to you right now. Sing, came the answer of the Lord. So she began to sing, you are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Wherever I am afraid, I will trust in you. Suddenly she felt God's all encompassing love and his assurance that he was in control, that nothing, not even death, could remove her from his presence. That night, the rebels unexpectedly released the Dominicans, but they confiscated their van Inside the van was their portable projection equipment and a cartridge of the Christian Becoming series catechism lessons which the sisters used in their school. 
A year later, the Sister Superior received a phone call. One of their captors had become a Christian and wanted to meet with them. When they met, he told them that he was an experienced killer and that he and the others wanted to kill all the sisters that night. But a voice was mysteriously heard coming from nowhere, ordering them not to touch the sisters because they were God's anointed ones. So the terrorists released the sisters instead. Discovering the slide projector, they set it up and began to watch the Christian Becoming series. At one viewing, several hundred rebels were watching and listening to God's word in their own language. Many were so moved that they decided to lay down their weapons. Standing before them as a fellow believer, their former captor said to them, Please forgive me for my sins of attempted murder and theft that day. Sister Superior and her fellow Dominican sisters returned to that mountain village where they were kidnapped and taught catechism to the former terrorists. In his play, Murder in the Cathedral, T.S. Eliot wrote, A martyrdom is always the design of God for his love of men, to warn them and to lead them, to bring them back to his ways. It is never the design of men, for the true martyr is he who has become the instrument of God, who has lost his will to the will of God, and who no longer desires anything for himself, not even the glory of being a martyr. Let us pray. Oh, loving God, how challenging it is to surrender our will to yours. So often, your divine will goes against our self-will and our self-love. May we be empowered by the Holy Spirit to remain faithful to you and to the Catholic faith until the end of our life, without counting the cost. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.